In this video, we're going to discuss the statistical definition of entropy. Up until this point, we've discussed entropy as the dispersal of energy, right? how energy is dispersed in different processes. That's a very macro level explanation of entropy. In order to have any sort of insight onto entropy on a micro level, we really have to look at this statistical definition. So we're kind of going to start with this, uh, this figure here, which really um, the basis of this is that any atom or molecule can only occupy certain energy levels. And this is a result uh, that we'll talk about more in, when we start talking about quantum chemistry. Uh, but right now, hopefully you have a little bit of an appreciation for the fact that any assortment of atoms or molecules has a particular energy. Right? So let's take this uh, example system that is a collection of three different particles, particle A, particle B, and particle C. And we'll say that the total energy of this system, this collection of particles, has a total energy of three. Now, each of these individual particles can occupy different energy levels from zero all the way to three. So they can have no energy or at maximum have an energy of three. If we think of a system being distributed in this fashion, we can imagine three different ways that we can distribute these particles and still get a total energy of three. So the first way that we can think about distributing these particles, energies, is if all the particles have an energy of one. If they each have an energy of one, they contribute one to the total energy, you get a total energy of three. The other way you can think about it is if, well, if one particle has an energy of three, and the other particles have an energy of zero. And the last type is type three, where one of them has an energy of two, the other has an energy of one, and the other has an energy of zero, right? So each of these um, different distributions of energy are called microstates, right? So we can distribute these particles in different ways to get the same energy. These individual distributions are called microstates. So I've drawn a visual representation of all of the different microstates of different types below, right? So we see type one here where all of them have one. Note that in type one, we only have one microstate, right? So for type one, there's only one microstate, right? There's only one way to distribute the particles in that fashion. Each one of them has one. There's only one way to do that, right? Uh, however, for type 2, we start to see that we can have multiple different uh, microstates. So the first microstate that I have here for type 2, particle A has an energy of 3, and the rest of them have uh, energy of 0. For the second one, particle B has an energy of 3, the rest are 0. And then the last one is where particle C has an energy of 3, and the rest have 0. This gives us three total microstates, right? So for type 2, we can have three microstates. Right, so uh, whenever you have d multiple microstates that give you the same energy, these are called degeneracies. So degeneracy, right, which we're gonna use the letter W to denote degeneracy. Right, so we would say that type two distributions are threefold degenerate, which just means that we have three different ways to distribute the particles and still get this same total energy representation. Right, so degeneracies are just a number of ways of achieving the same energy. Right, so number of ways of achieving. a given energy state. Right, that's degeneracy. So uh, now if we go to type three, what we notice is that there's six different ways that we can distribute the particles with a type three distribution, right? Where one of the particles has energy two, one of them has energy one, and the other has energy zero. There's six different ways of doing that. So type three, is going to have six microstates. Right, so um, what the statistical definition of entropy is really based on is how much degeneracy you have in a given configuration. The higher the degeneracy, 
the higher the entropy. And it's governed by the Boltzmann equation, which basically says that the entropy is going to be equal to K, the Boltzmann constant, times the natural log of the degeneracy. So the natural log of W, right? This is the Boltzmann equation for the uh, for entropy, right? So basically, the higher the degeneracy, the higher the entropy, right? And this gels well with our definition of entropy as the dispersal of energy. We say that the more uh, dispersed energy is, the higher the entropy is, right? So the same thing here. The, the more ways you can disperse uh, the particles or distribute particles in these different microstates, the higher the entropy is going to be. And we can kind of think about this through the lens of the second law of thermodynamics as well. So if I were to ask you which type, if you were to throw these in a bag and randomly pick one out, randomly pick out a microstate, which one would you most likely be picking out of that bag, right? You would be picking most likely a type three distribution if you were to just randomly select one, right? Now with this one, it's still rather likely that you get a type two or a type one distribution, but you can imagine how this starts to um, you know, become much more likely as you go to larger and larger scales. Think about a, a, a solid, a small solid, that has Avogadro's number worth of atoms in it, right? Now you start to think about, okay, if there's whatever distribution is most dispersed, whichever one has the most possible microstates, that's going to be the one I'm most likely to find uh, this system in, right? So that's that kind of gels with the second law of thermodynamics, right? This, the, if it's a real process, a spontaneous process, there's going to be this increase in entropy. The ones that have higher entropy are more likely, right? Now, this equation is actually extremely famous. This Boltzmann equation is super famous. It's so famous that they actually put it on his headstone in his grave. So this is actually his grave in Austria. And if you look here at the top, let me use a different color here. If you look here at the top, there's our entropy equation, right? K log W, right? And you've heard Boltzmann's name so much in chemistry and, and physics. Now, you know that there's so much that he accomplished. And so for this equation to be the one that they put on the top of his headstone, um, it's extremely important. And this equation really, um, really solved a lot of issues as far as giving a molecular interpretation to entropy. So it was a very, very groundbreaking equation. And so that's why it's, it's forever immortalized on his gravestone in Austria.